So for the PTS, we're talking a little bit about the new mythic items. And I, I just briefly wanted to talk about how good is Malakath's Band of Brutality. It's a one-piece item that comes within the next patch that releases on uh, the 26th. And it's a one piece and it says it increases your damage done by 25%. It says, but you cannot deal critical damage and it comes with the bloodthirsty trait, which of course you can you can change. And of course, it's got a stamina glyph attached to it, which of course you can change for whatever you want. And talking about how strong Malakath's band is, uh, Malakath's band of brutality, I was kind of trying to think of a, a, a build in particular that I would run. So I try to mimic what I would run on on my Magicka DK. So for those who play Mag DK and wanted to see uh, what exactly could you run for next patch, especially for no CP. And I think most people who are going to end up running, most people who end up running Malakath's, ban, Malakath's band uh, are more than likely going to be making the best use out of it with a heavy armor setup so typically in running in heavy armor you don't have a lot of base crit especially in no cp in heavy armor especially if you're not running mage light or you're not utilizing uh, spell critical pots your critical is going to be 10 percent. and even if you are running uh mage light for the critical buff you're going to be sitting at around 20 percent so only one out of five attacks are going to deal critical damage. The other thing is that for the next patch, as you can see, everybody has a base of 1350 critical, which means you no longer have a base of 1.5 times damage like you do on live, which means critical, critical damage is just by nature getting nerfed. So the spike damage that normally comes into play to secure kills and people who maybe are like slightly tankier is kind of removed uh even though zenimax said that they were trying to make it so that players were a bit squishier and people are saying you know them with the removal of the so-called tank meta um, by the healing nerf um it, i really don't see that actually happening because they gave everybody free critical resistance and so if you were running for example if you were running a setup with either reinforced or divines maybe you were running divines and you were running a glass cannon build maybe you were running a few more pieces of of um of well fitted because you run more of a medium armor roll dodge build well you just got tankier for free right because that critical damage now gets reduced uh, by, because Zenimax gave it to you for free, um, imagining that they were somehow offering more diversity and talking about reducing the uh, the amount of time that it takes to kill players because people are so tanky with the healing reduction. Anyway, so I wanted to try to mimic um, as much as I could what it would look like on someone running heavy armor. So just kind of like taking a look at the builder, for a mad dk if your mad dk is a dunmer or if it, or whatever race you were it would it really doesn't matter i would say probably more so if you were an argonian this was a build that i kind of put together when mercy was looking to run uh a different sort of setup but anyways so just taking a look at this setup this is just kind of like not necessarily a min maxed setup but for this particular build in mind um, for mag dk it's a heavy armor it's a heavy armor setup you can see we're running five heavy five heavy innate with two light right so this is a five heavy and the kina is there i would probably not run kina and i would probably run um the extra spell pen from the new valken scoria the change to valken scoria um, is that instead of giving you HP, it now gives you, it now gives you uh, spell pen. So we'll take a look at here at Valken Scoria. So looking at Valken, they made a change so that Valken Scoria no longer gives you um, HP. Instead, it gives you spell pen. So instead of running the Kina, you can run either one. It really doesn't matter. If you want more damage, go Kina. I mean, if you want more damage, go Scoria. If you want it to affect your healing, then of course you would go kina but i like to min i like to go a little bit more damage so i would probably run the extra pen especially because we're wearing heavy armor and you don't have access to um you don't have access to the light armor passives which give you more more spell pen 
you 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 get you lose out on running concentration, but you do gain um, the benefits of heavy armor, which is higher resistances. You're gonna have a little bit more HP recovery. You're gonna get a little bit more recovery from the Constitution passive. Juggernaut is gonna give you an additional eight percent health, and then you're gonna get an additional twenty five percent when um, heavy attacking and so I'm running on this particular setup that I'm talking about I have a Destro on the front bar and running sword and shield on the back So you'll be able to heavy attack for more magic of return And of course you're able to heavy attack on your back bar for more stamina region And then of course um, you receive an additional 8% healing so because the with the next patch healing is going to be nerfed right? and especially mag DK will be affected because their healing isn't all that great. I would say more than likely, especially if you're a no CP player, to move, I would move over to heavy armor. I would move over to heavy armor to kind of mitigate some of the healing nerf, but then also because of all the rest of the benefits that I just spoke of, right? So that's what we're talking about here. Um, and talking about uh, mag DK. So like I said, we're going five heavy with innate axiom, and then look, and then two light, two light pieces, and then clever on the back bar. And then I would run at least, so we're going two spell, two spell damage, and at least one of them is going to be infused for the pot reduction. So normally a pot is 43 seconds in ESO, and then of course this brings it down to 35, which gives you 15 seconds of downtime on uh, Clever Alchemist. Of course, this also gives you more recovery because now you have a pot every 35 seconds, instead of utilizing a pot every 43 seconds. So that's going to help you with your sustain. And of course, um, I always talk about effective spell power. 3,500 is okay. Typically, you want to shoot for at least 8K. But you might be wondering, well, why do you have a gold ring of Julianos, right? So this is, in essence, is going to where, where your ring of Malakath is going to be, right? So the easiest way on the builder to mimic what it does to your build is through the buffs right so it the here we're going to click major major berserk because major berserk gives you 25 percent and of course that's exactly what malakath's band gives you gives you an additional 25 percent damage to your spec right so we're going to go ahead and click here major berserk and that now takes us to a 100 percent right so you're going to have that extra 25% damage and it's up all the time. So that now maxes you out to 9320, right? And so taking a look at your abilities, right? Because typically with that amount of damage, you're going to want a more burst to your spec, which is why instead of going with Power Lash for the healing, I decided in this particular build, I would go with Molten. I know there's a lot of people out there that like diversity. Some people like to use Molten. Some people like to use Power Lash. Here we're showcasing uh, Molten. So on this particular setup, uh, one, we're going to have a little bit of resource return because of the constitution passive from heavy armor. And then, of course, you have the ability to heavy attack for additional damage. Um, and especially since you're hitting heavy armor, you're going to receive more return uh, just because of the passives of heavy armor. You get an additional 25% return when you deal a heavy attack. And on top of that, we have um, utilizing ele elemental drain for the extra uh resistance uh, utilizing for major breach so you gain an additional 5000 and that is on top of the 6000 right so even though we're in heavy armor we still have 6000 uh, spell pen so that's 6k plus an additional 52 so that'll put you at around like 11000 almost 11400 i'd say um but in terms of the damage in like i said base spell pen is really low so 23% is not worth, um, it's not worth, you know, worrying about I'm going to miss out on critical damage because you're, you're only going to be critting roughly one out of five. And of course, if somebody blocks, right, you can't, when someone blocks in game, um, you can't crit them unless you, that per, unless it's a dot, right? The only thing that can crit on a person who's blocking is, of course, if someone, if you're running a dot build and then all your dots can still crit. Um, but, on a, but if you're blocking all those all those uh, abilities then get reduced um, by a minimum of 50%. So I'm looking at the tooltip of the Molten. You can see your Molten Whip tooltip 
because it gains the benefit of the additional 25% damage. So Molten Whip already has a very high tooltip. So obviously the higher the tooltip, then that 25% base, of course, is a huge chunk of extra damage. And so, and this is a no CP, right? As you can see, this is no CP. This is a no CP build um, that I'm talking about for Neshvat. And this is kind of how broken, I would say, Malakath's band can be, where you can still sit here with really good resistances, pretty high amount of health, and still maintain really good effective power, which is what you're looking for, right? You're looking for a very high effective power so that you can spike your opponents down with decent amount of damage. And you can see the tooltip, 18,000, that's a pretty good tooltip for a Molten and OCP. And then you can see the tooltip right here, Burning Embers. I typically don't run Burning Embers because it's too expensive. Um, but for a Molten build, I would either run either Burning Embers, especially because you might need it for the heal, but you've got access to Coag and as well as Cauterize. But if you didn't want to run Burning, but you uh, Burning Embers, you, what you could still run is you could run uh, Chains, right? For the, for, um, I would run the other morph for the Gap Closer and Powering Chains, and you can put that there, and it'll still give you the benefit of um, trying to cast the uh, the Burning Embers. So that's this is with a three stack, right? This is with three stack, and you can see that's our 3800 more than enough to be able to sort kills, especially with high molten. So, this gives you access to a gap closer, which Mad DK typically struggles with mobility. Uh, you still have access to race against time, fairly decent healing, and then you can see, of course, the tooltip on ferocious leap. And this is what's going to happen. Um, for no CP, I, 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 this is what you could, this is what, this is probably what I will run for next patch. I'll probably run heavy armor on my, on my mag DK, switch over from, uh, I'll leave behind utilizing, um, burning spell weave and move over to clever, move, move over to a back bar clever, um, and then play this way and probably, and have a lot more, a lot more burst. And of course run the lover. And that mine is a uh, mine isn't a dark elf. Mine is a Breton. I switched over to Breton. Um, but whatever you're running, I think probably the, your best bet for especially for resource management would be Argonium. Um, especially if you're running, especially if you're running clever with like the potion passive for you know with the reduction, uh, because Argonian's passive is that they gain extra stamina, magic, and health whenever they pop a pot. And of course. The, the lower the reduction on the pot, the more resource management you have. And typically, mag, mag DK, um, especially in no CP, you want to maximize your you want to maximize your damage, but you also want to be able to maintain enough recovery because if you don't have any resources, then you just die. And that's, that's basically just kind of like a little brief discussion on Malakath Band. It's really strong, especially for next patch because of all the nerfs. Um, and I didn't think that they foresaw this coming. I do think it would probably be best in slot for the vast majority of people who want to run a heavy armor spec. There's really no reason not to, especially if you're decent at the game and you know how to uh, combo. And if you're running heavy armor, you'll still be able to main ridiculously high amounts uh, of damage because it's literally like having a 100% uptime on Major Berserk. And there's and of course you can utilize this on a vast on a, on, a, on a wider array of builds and of course i would say if you're if you're not at least close to 50 percent um um if you're not close to 50 percent on your either weapon or spell critical you're probably your best bet is going to be running malakath's band for the extra 100 percent uptime and of course if you're running like for example like on a heavy armored stand blade and then you still can utilize malakath's band because then you can you still have access to um, major berserk uh, through through mark target and so that will send your no cp damage probably up to well over 14,000 effective effective weapon power but just wanted to leave this little little bit of a tidbit here for you guys for l wondering what is it that might you might want to run for next patch i particularly will be moving my dk over to to heavy armor for next patch and i'll be making some some pretty decent changes um, to the way i play and it will hit leagues harder looking forward to it um hope you guys have a great day thanks for watching if this is your first time here be sure to hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss out on future content and of course feel free to like if you enjoy the content feel free to hit the like button thanks for watching take care god bless